Nah, that's silly. Wow. This video is garbage. Uh, what do you mean? I mean the video quality is bad, the audio is scratchy, and to top it all off, he's spending nearly 30 minutes talking about Sonic fan characters. Sounds like you're just a hater, bro. Well, I think it was neat. Plus, this was the start to Matt's new series, wasn't it? I guess. As long as Matt moves on from doing silly Sonic OCs, we should be okay. Guys, 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 guys. Oh guys, no. Guys. I just realized something terrible about this Sonic character video. That you uploaded it? No, stupid. It's that I totally left out the digitizing and coloring process. Holy mackerel, you're right. Oh dear. Matt made a mistake on a video. Someone call the media. I have to amend this right now. Move aside, guys. <laughs> For starters, you'll need a sketchbook. Yes, you heard me right, it's time to dig around for those 20-something collections of sketches most of you likely have lying around. I find using these to be way easier than digitizing something from scratch, as a sketch not only gives you a nice foundation to work with, but it also allows you to make necessary adjustments in a digital form. Oh look, he's simpin', he's simpin'! Dude, shut up. Here's one, a sketch of Yuki from the Cyberverse series. I think we'll go with her. Now when it comes to digitizing art, many people are under the common misconception that you need super expensive software and fancy schmancy hardware, and I'm going to tell you guys right now that you do not need to sell your liver for Adobe products. So for my process, the first thing you need is a smartphone or a tablet. The second thing you need is a wonderful little program called Ibis Paint. So firstly, you have to create a new image and select the resolution. I usually go for something around the 2000 range, so we'll do 2000 by 1500. Oh come on, that's not big enough. Okay, if you say so. Uh... I'm sure it'll be fine. Once you find a sketch you feel like using, it's time to import it into your new drawing project. In the bottom right, you'll see a stack of three squares with a number on it. Tap it, and it'll pull up your layers along with these other options. We can go over these later, but for now, let's tap the small camera symbol. This'll pull up your photo library and allow you to import a photo of your sketch. Once the sketch is in, you can resize it onto your canvas till it's in a nice position. In addition, you can also readjust certain parts of your sketch if needed. For example, I might need to bring her head up just a little bit. There. And now we can start our line art. First you gotta pick a brush that fits this process. You can mess around with the different options, but my personal favorites are the felt tip pens. They're nice and broad and perfect. Also, depending on the feel you want to go for with your drawing, the size of your strokes can either be cartoonishly big or smaller and closer to anime style. For the sake of this drawing, I'm going to go with smaller size. Basically, what you want to do is trace the outlines of your sketch. Try to keep them as clean as possible and don't leave any open spaces. There, your line art is done. Next up, you want to open that layer menu from earlier and tap this little box with a plus on it. Then tap Duplicate Layer. Now you have two layers with the same line art. Next up, create two blank layers by pressing the normal plus sign. You may now move these blank layers in between the two line art copies. These will be important later, trust me. And this is when things are gonna get really fun. Lord knows they certainly haven't yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I boring you? Yes. Now for our coloring. When you move on to crucial steps like this one, it's important to make sure you stay on the right layer. In this case, you want to stay on the copy of your line art that's under everything else. As long as you get that set in, you're good to color. And this can be done by either using brush strokes or simply the fill tool. I prefer using the latter. I know, I'm cheap. Now, let's give Yuki her proper dark purple color palette. And there we have it, we got our colors in. But as you can probably tell, it kind of looks like it's missing something. The do not steal disclaimer? Nitwit, it's already stolen. No, what it's really missing is some shading. 
If your art is looking a little too plain or two dimensional, shading is a great way to make it pop off the screen. Now most people prefer airbrush shading while I usually prefer the more anime style broad shading. But for the sake of this video, we're going to try both. And this is when those two blank layers come into play. So select one of them and this will be our focus for the first style of shading. Now before we find our airbrush, you're going to want to tap this top layer that says selection layer. This is a special layer that allows you to highlight only certain areas that you want to affect in your drawing. So let's color in this spot, then move back to our shading layer. You'll notice it's now outlined with this little grid thing. This means the area is selected. Now we're going to look for an airbrush. And here you'll see there are a few options, but we'll just stick with the normal one. Now as you airbrush into the selected area, you'll notice that as you let go, everything that was drawn outside of your outline will disappear. That's what makes the selection thing really useful. You can basically go nuts without drawing over any area you don't want to. Once you get the airbrushing done in one spot, you basically just rinse and repeat for the next areas. Also, since Yuki has somewhat of a metallic exterior, we can improve that by adding on to this technique with the color white. And there we go, we got some fairly decent airbrush shading. That was pretty easy to follow, wasn't it, Mark? Snore. 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 Okay, fair. Now, for those of you who thought this method might have been a little too complicated, totally fair. Airbrushing looks great, but it takes a lot of work to get right. Even I haven't really gotten the hang of it, to be honest. So to put you guys at ease, we're now going to do my preferred method of shading, and this is what we need the second layer for. So go ahead and hide the shading layer you just finished by tapping the little eye symbol, and we'll now start fresh with the new layer. Remember, don't draw on the wrong layer. Always double check. I once knew someone who drew on the wrong layer. Never the same again. Now this shading is somewhat similar to our airbrushing technique, but instead of airbrushes, we're going to be using another felt tip pen and the fill tool. So start by making sure your color is on plain black, then outline your shaded area, adjusting the stroke size if necessary. Once that's done, fill it in with plain black. Now just to test this out, you're going to want to head down to this little meter with the 100% label by it. This is your opacity meter, something that changes the transparency of your layer. This will be key in the shading process I'm showing you. Bring it down to say 50% or 40%. And here you'll see the pitch black shading has now become lighter and therefore more realistic. And just like before, we'll add the white strokes to give her more of a shine. And there we have it. Both shadings are done. Let me know in the comments which one you think looks better. Neither. They're both Cosmo recolors. You know, I was having a lot of fun forgetting that you were here. Now it's time to polish things up with some fancy effects. But before we do any of that, we have to commit our layers and combine them. And for the sake of this drawing, I'm keeping my line shading layer. Now, Ibis Paint has some really cool effects you can apply to your drawings in order to spruce them up a bit. These can be found in your left toolbar under Filter or FX. And as you can see, there are a lot of different categories of effects that you can try out on your drawings, and luckily they're easy to undo if you don't like them. Now, it's best to pick an effect that you think is going to fit your character. For example, I think Yuki needs her signature glowing effect, so we can find that in the Style category. Choose Glow Outer and adjust accordingly. There, click the check mark, and now she's got a proper glow just like in the Cyberverse series. And we don't have to stop there. Let's add another one of my favorite effects. Go to the Artistic category and choose Glitch. And I think we're done. Congratulations, you completed a Sonic OC. Here's your trophy. You broke my freaking shoulder! Anyways, there you have it. That's my process of digitizing sketches. Like I mentioned before, this may not be a perfect technique, but it's my favorite and it's worked out for me well so far. While I would consider this guideline to be a decent stepping stone for those of you who want to draw digitally, I strongly encourage you all to give other digital techniques a shot as well. Ibis Paint is a very versatile program with lots of different features, so there's plenty of room to try new stuff. If I'm not mistaken, it might also be available on PC as well. Anyways, that's all the time I got for this episode of Drawing Inspiration. Thank you all for joining me, and happy drawing!
think this turned out really well. What do you make of it, Mark? Pretty much a lame recolor. Nothing special. I think she looks neat. You would.